Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm awake. <laughs> Yeah, especially when musicians aren't supposed to be awake until like 11, 12 o'clock. Right. Well, but, you know, I have to say with like that TV schedule, you kind of get used to just waking up at, you know, 4 a.m. and just oh, doing it. That's exactly how so. we do it in radio. I mean, radio people are just up at all times. Yep. Well, if I hadn't have gone into if I hadn't had any musical talent, I probably would have gone into broadcast journalism or something. So I'd be in the same boat, waking up at 2 a.m. and all that stuff. Oh, my God. You do have a strong voice for that. I mean, I, what, what's stopping you from even doing it or even hosting a podcast? Um, I mean, at some point, it could be definitely something I've looked into. I also did cartoon voiceovers for I did uh, voiceover work for a huge part of my life. Wow. So you totally get where we're coming from. Yeah, I do. I can totally get you. Wow. Being on the East Coast, right there in the Baltimore area, I mean, the East Coast sound is so different than everywhere else. So when you go out to California for NBC's The Voice, what what is the culture change that you're personally experiencing? It's it's a huge culture shift, musically, socially, all of that. Um, there's such a big dichotomy between the East Coast and the West Coast in general. And I'm definitely an East Coaster. I talk really fast. I'm kind of loud. I can be a little bit intense. I don't know what chill is. <laughs> so the West Coast was definitely a change. Um, musically, too, it's a completely different thing. Um, and I think those personality traits actually affect the music. Because on the West Coast, you have this more like laid back. It's Everything has a little bit more space to it. Even the production, like if you listen to how like like Pharrell has this very specific yes, sound that yes. almost has this space in it. Mm -hmm. And he's not afraid of silence. He's not afraid to just let it chill for a little bit. He's not afraid to let no vocal come in for like eight extra measures. Yeah. And you're like, Pharrell, what's happening? The East Coast is not. We're, we're very much like, we're a little more structured. And yeah, you'll have a solo, you'll have a guitar solo, but there's structure to it. <laughs> Well, I mean, even comedians will tell you that that pause is the most important part of their success. And you've got to learn how to put yourself into that pause. I'm on stage talking to an audience and I just take a moment of silence and they all kind of go, what do we do? And it's like, it's going to be OK. <laughs> yeah. And see, that, down here in the South, we all talk so slow, but they talk fast nowadays. It's not like they're, they're not speaking at the level that they did when I came down here in 1985. Southerners are learning how to speak faster. And it's like with that Southern accent, man, it's a whole new accent, you know, a whole new language. It really it really is. Um, some of the actually I told my wife at, at a couple different points during the show, I was like, OK, if I come back with a Southern accent, I'm sorry. Oh, because Because there's so many people with Southern accents. <laughs> So I found myself picking up on on a very specific Kentucky accent. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I swear, is one of my favorite things to say. Is is uh, one of the other contestants? She actually packed me some snacks for a rehearsal day because we weren't going to have food there. And she was so nice, and she hands me this. She goes, "Now you have a great day at school tomorrow, baby." <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. And I was like. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I want to talk like you. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody blessed your heart yet? Oh, that's the first thing Reba said to me, except <laughs> I didn't hear it. She she whispered it, like I saw it on TV. She whispered it because I was nervous and I let out like a little breath, like a little whoo, just like a little taking a moment. And the microphone is so hot that it echoed throughout the entire silent wow. auditorium. And then I got to watch Reba on TV. She just kind of smiled, whispered like, oh, bless her heart. And I'm like, that's not <laughs> supposed to be a compliment, is it? It's Usually it's it's one of those things where it's like, uh, what did I get myself into? Uh, get me out of here. I like you, but I got to go. <laughs> I know. I was, I was like, this is not a good sign, Miss Reba. <laughs> but she turned and I didn't know she did it at all. So I guess it was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered what the artist feels when they go into the auditorium like that because, you know, the, the members of Aerosmith tell me that they one of the reasons why they do the sound check is to find out where the echo points are. I mean, I can't imagine what you're feeling when there's nothing going on. Right. So, funny story. Um, I was always, I had like this slight curse in high school and when I was younger that followed me around where my microphones wouldn't be on. Oh boy. 
and it would just be like weird technical glitches and it's you know i hate using the word cursed because it's so intense but like it was this weird hiccup that kept following me around and so at you know 34 years old i'm going on the voice stage and i thought i'll be damned if that microphone is off (laughs) (laughs) so when i breathed out and i let out that little i was also kind of just hoping maybe the microphone would be on so it was actually really like validating to be like okay the microphone is off (laughs) <laughs> just making sure I can sing my song now. It's just an anxiety that I I have. Oh, I and so when I did it, it's like, yeah, I was anxious and I just kind of did it. But I, I know that I, I was there. I was still present in my body. I wasn't blacked out. Wow. Uh, I definitely did it to be like, I hope this microphone is on. Yeah. See, I, that happened to me a lot in television. And the thing is, is that it was always so embarrassing. And and that's one of the reasons why I hardwire everything. People will go, do you have a, do you have a wireless microphone? Hell no. We're going hardwire. I, I need to make sure that your voice is going to be on that microphone when I, when I, you know, when I pot it up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a weird technological thing. And obviously, like, the voice crew is, like, is the best in the business. I would say I've worked, my dad's a professional musician. He's worked with a lot of people. Um, I I've worked and, and met with, with a lot of people. And I have to say crew wise, of course that microphone was on the voice yeah. crew is the best. Chris, our stage manager is, is amazing. He's the one whose voice you hear on the TV show. This is next what? artist entering oh my that God. he's the one who's, so you do hear him on the show. Like every time people just don't know that's Chris and that's our stage manager. And he's, Amazing, and I don't know how he keeps his brain inside of his head. Yeah, one of these days they're going to have to do some sort of behind-the-scenes story on the making of NBC's The Voice because there is a city behind your performance. There really is. They should talk about like so. We've got Chris, our stage manager. We have Trelawney, our vocal coach, um, who also is the vocal coach that works with our coaches. <laughs> So she she's Adam Levine's vocal coach as well, you know, outside of the show. Um, but Trelawney is amazing. We're getting the best of the best. Um, we have other coaches that we work with as well. Um, Miss Deborah Bird, unfortunately, passed away uh, not that long ago. She created the position of TV show vocal coach. Wow. For American Idol. Wow. Wow. And she's a legend. I'm getting goosebumps. I have her voice on my phone <gasps> giving me these um, affirmations that she would have us say. And one of my favorites is, everybody loves to hear me sing. <laughs> I and love And she just that. says, say it to yourself. Say it over and over and over. And then we have Peter, our other vocal coach. We've got this... Uh, we've got the wardrobe department. We have the head of wardrobe, Erin, who happens to be, um, she happens to be my stylist during a lot of the process. And they're just, they're great. Wow. They're wonderful people. It, there's an army of people in that wardrobe department alone. You've got the band. Yes. We've got, I've, yes. I, you know, I've got my new, my new, uh, my new bestie Kyle, the bass player, whose child is autistic, oh. and I love the fact that I was able to connect that for him, and he talked to me. Oh yeah, he also plays bass for Kelly Clarkson. Oh my god! <laughs> it's those kind of things. Our band director Paul, Paul Markovich, best in the business. He worked with Pink. He worked with Cher. He clearly likes intense women, so it's gonna work out with me, right? <laughs> See, that's the great working relationship. The the one thing that we don't get as viewers and as listeners is the, what I call the family tree of music. When when they're working side by side with other creative people, but there there are no books that talk about that. And it and it takes people like yourself to bring it to us so that we have a better respect of what it is that we're planting inside our imaginations while we're watching the show. Oh yeah. Well, and I'll I'll give them even more credit right now. I will I will give them all of the flowers. So we did something during our show that is is not necessarily typical and they were filming multiple things at the same time oh wow so these people were not just dressing one group of people they were dressing two groups of people they were working with two full groups of people that's insane Mm, mm, mm. they I don't know how they kept anything straight. I don't know how they kept all of it together.
Now, there's something new that I, I've noticed on this this season's um, of, of of NBC's The Voice, and that is the playoff pass. When the, the playoff pass. I, explain that to listeners who are being introduced, because even though this is season number 25, they they, they could be newbies. Yes. Well, and the playoff pass was just introduced in yeah. season 23. And it's taken it's me two seasons new. to even understand this. I, this is the first time. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yes. It's brand new. So we were told as contestants that we were getting something really cool called the playoff pass for our season. And I said, what is that? Yeah. And they said, it's on season 23. So I went directly to season 23 and watched the entire thing. And the playoff pass is kind of a like a fast pass. Uh, Instead of do not pass, go do not collect $200. It's just pass, go and collect $200. (laughs) Wow. It's, it's really great. It's, you go from the top 40, which is the battle pairings, yep. to the top 20 Yeah, if you get the playoff pass. You get to skip this round called the knockout rounds, yeah. which is another head-to-head round. You're not singing the same song. You are singing a different song than your you know, partner that you're going to knock out, but they're still choosing between the two of you. Wow. And unless you get stolen, only one of you moves on. And only one of you moves on on the team that you're on at that moment. If you get stolen, you're on a different team. Amazing opportunity. I'm really familiar with that because, I mean, to me, that that really changed the game when they when they started doing that because it, all of a sudden, you know, he, you know, here came all these other, you know, these these players onto another team and it would strengthen them up. And you're going, oh, there, there's just no way. I mean, how is Chance the Rapper going to win here? And all of a sudden, Chance the Rapper steals somebody. And you're going, oh my God! They only do this in the yep. NFL and the NBA. Yeah, and it's an amazing opportunity to get stolen. But can you imagine as a contestant being like? Wait, what? Yep, exactly. It's like being a it's like growing up and then your parents being like, "Actually, we're <laughs> we're going to put you up for adoption. Somebody else is adopting you." And you're like, "I'm 30 years old. What's happening?" <laughs> and then Chance the Rapper goes, "Hi." You know? Uh, now you come with me and you live with me and you're like, "What? What's happening, Chance the Rapper?" <laughs> it's like a fever dream. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I find inspiring about you is that you kind of have that storyline al- al- along the lines of Chris Stapleton in, in, in the way that, you know, he waited so long to go out there on his own. And, and I mean, and so have you. I mean, here you are at 34 and we're just finally seeing who you are. And, and I just love the fact that you sang that Chris Stapleton song. Oh, I love Chris Stapleton in general. I love him so, so much. Yeah. I, I think... Um, Obviously, we all heard Tennessee Whiskey when it came out. Um, my favorite Chris Stapleton song is Fire Away. Mm. It gives me goosebumps every single time. And it's probably one of the most heartbreaking songs I've ever heard. But that's also something I do. So maybe that's just, you know, that that kind of whatever's going on in my brain sees what's going on in his songwriter brain with that song. Yeah. Just feels connected okay i mean because i mean we're, we're in a world of post malone where i mean there, there is such a musical evolution going on right now that it, and then when i see you perform it's like oh my god she not only fits in but hey she's she's gonna push it further than what happens thank you that's i appreciate that i just don't i never know how to feel about it when people talk about how i perform because like i don't i don't see it mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't get to see that Even if I watch it on TV or if I watch something back, it's not, you know, it's not the same. I'm just watching myself and usually I'm very critical, but (laughs) thank you. Thank you so much. I, you know, I'm my, my own worst critic, but I try to give myself as much grace as I can. I feel like if I'm giving that grace to everyone else, why would I not give it to myself? And that's kind of a big thing with me is I try to remain, you know, vulnerable. Yep. And yet I try to exhibit strength and then I always try to make connection. So that's the one thing I've learned about talking with these, even these, these gigantic rock stars of the seventies and eighties and things is that they're so down to earth. And it's like, God, I hope all of the new artists that are coming into the industry these days are just as down to earth as, as Def Leppard, as, as people of Leonard Skinner. And it's like, you just sit there and you go, please be down to earth. 
you know, as as an artist myself, we have the same same feelings when you meet somebody that's what doesn't matter what level of fame they're at either, because you you never know. Yeah. Um, and we hope the same thing. I, I was just, you know, you hope and pray that somebody is is a good person. Um, somebody who's famous that you see on TV, you know, like Reba McIntyre, you, you just hope that she really is that way. <laughs> and oh my goodness, that woman is exactly who she is. Like she's exactly the person you see. She's, she's so goofy. She's so weird. Yep. It's great. When I first got into radio in 1979, there was a new artist on that radio station and, and I, I, I called her Reby. Reby McIntyre, <gasps> and and she was so brand new that we, I, I didn't know. I honestly didn't know what was even hitting country music at that time. <gasps> I love that. That's actually that's that's like the perfect that's like a perfect moment though because that's what happens to everybody. You get your name said wrong. Yeah, and that's, whatever happens. <laughs> that's back when we were playing forty fives, L. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I want to. Okay, I want to get in a time machine. And I want to go back to that time. I just want to see it. My dad tells oh. me about it. The, the, I know I missed out on something amazing. We're sound, aware it was an amazing time for music. The sound of the Q-Burn on an album or a 45. I mean, to this day, I know how, you know, a quarter turn is the 45. It has to be almost a full turn for the album. And I mean, it, it was just, it was such, it was poetry in motion when you would sit there and watch a jock on the air, get get the records ready. And if you only had two turntables, it was a little bit more difficult, but I loved it when we had three because then I had space to grow. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Are there pictures of like this? Are oh, there? Yeah. I want to find some. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to look oh, yeah. up some stuff. And oh my go god, a, and down then, a rabbit hole. And then go go in there and listen to the old radio jocks and see how we talk like disc jockeys. It's not like what we're doing right now. I mean, the, it was showmanship. It was boss jock. It was it was my. I'm saying something, and man, you're gonna take it to the water cooler at work. Yep. Um, I used to listen to the replays of the Casey Kasem yes. countdown. Hello they again. Would put that I'm on Casey every Kasem night, from American Top Forty. I was a bartender. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So every single night they would just put it on super late, and I was a bartender. So on my drive home and as a musician, super late gigs, I would just put that on, and it was just kind of like a nice routine every single night. But it's funny that you talked about the like old rock stars of the 70s and the 80s i worked at a concert venue as the bartender for nine years i've met a lot of those rock stars yeah. they you're right they're so nice also everybody thinks they're like you know we're we're rockers we're tough we're they're all vegan yep yeah they would always need like a vitamix for their like kale smoothies Everything was very specific. They always had like the diffusers for <laughs> lavender or mint or whatever smell to calm themselves down. Like they were so great. The the guys from Night Ranger got to know me. Yes, yes. And they would come out and they, I have a bald head. So it turned into a thing when they would walk to the stage, they would rub my head before yeah, they'd go on. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw Lou Graham from Foreigner perform oh. and I, I froze in the front row. Of course. Uh, this lady was ordering a martini and I had the front row and all of a sudden the, the piano starts bump, bump, bump. <laughs> and this man just goes, you're as cold as ice. And I just, I, I shushed this woman. I went and I stared at the stage and I waited for the line to be over, you know, willing to sacrifice our love. And then I looked right back at this woman and I went, I am so sorry. What was that, Martini? Yeah. And you know what's so interesting, Al? Full circle, he just announced his retirement last week. <gasps> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you've got, you've got a moment as well, and you need to get that written down so you can preserve it for future readers. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, I, have a, I definitely have a, a book, a book or two that I would like to write. I got lots of thoughts. <laughs> So we'll see. Yeah, I got to meet Don McLean too. Good you know, you. it's crazy, crazy thing. Wow. So now, where can people go to find out more about you and give you some love, especially on NBC's The Voice? So to find me, you can find me on social media, just like everybody else in this ridiculous, crazy social media world that we live in now. So you can find me on Instagram at l.rogerthat. My wife was in the army. 
and I thought it was kind of a cute little, you know, Roger that. <laughs> so it's L L period Roger that. Um, oh if you type in L Rogers, it's Rogers with a D. So I always say yes. Rogers like Dodgers because I was on the West Coast and it was easier. Now I just have to say Rogers with a D on the East Coast because people don't seem to absorb it when I say Dodgers yeah. over here. And then you can also find me on TikTok. And this is the craziest name that I could have ever picked on TikTok. It's reality show reject. Oh my God. <laughs> because I've done so many different shows where I've been called in and not chosen and it just never worked out. And so I thought it was a fun name for TikTok. And um, I guess we'll have to see if I have to change it, right? <laughs> right. Well, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Al. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being so down to earth and real. I love you for that so much. Of course. Anytime. It's what I do. You be brilliant <laughs> today, okay? Thank you. You too.